Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is my distinct honor and privilege to welcome you to historic Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam for today's Dry Dock 5 anchoring ceremony. I'm Captain Steve Patty, commanding officer in charge of construction at Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard. On behalf of many men and women who have worked long, challenging, and fulfilling days over the last several years, I'd like to express our sincere gratitude for your attendance at today's monumental event. We are excited to celebrate this early construction milestone, marking the installation of the piles that will anchor the foundational footprint of Dry Dock 5. This is the first graving dock built in Pearl Harbor since 1943 and the highest value single construction project in Navy history. Today's ceremony recognizes the significance of this project, the efforts of the project team to date, and the extensive partnership of government, industry, and stakeholders that made it possible. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for the national anthem and Hawaii Pono'i, played by the U.S. Pacific Fleet Ceremonial Band, followed by a blessing from Kahu Sean Kiheva. Welcome to this uh, uh, rededication, I should say, of this dry dock number five. We come in the name of love, driven by the spirit of aloha. And the alo in aloha is to come into the presence of one another, the ha, the breath of life, and the oha, the, the ohana, the family, or a joyous affection. So we come together in the presence of one another by, give, by the giving and receiving of life with a joyous affection. And that's what we are people today, to continue to give love with a joyous affection that comes with no reservation. That's who we are as the people of Hawaii, and that's what we should be driven by in the spirit of aloha. So with that, ipulikako, let us pray. Uh, Father, your, net, your word says in our native tongue, ke ke me e kolu, o kamana o iyo, o kamana o lana a me ke aloha. We know that there's faith, hope, and love, and the greatest is aloha. And that your words also says in our native tongue, 
ahunui ona me apau ua mana oia i ona me apau ua mana olana ona me apau ua ho mana vanui ona me apau knowing that love believes bears hopes and endures all things and so lord we ask for your blessings not just over this uh, new dock but over the entire uh, square footage of this land lord would you continue to bless us would you continue to we pray for safety and health for the building of this place but most of all we pray for the building of our own hearts as well lord so that when we speak we will speak with love and a joyous affection when we're in the presence of one another so father we thank you father we ask your blessings over the United States of America, its people, and our beloved Hawaii. Nokoloko mai kai o kahaku Yesu Christo. Amen. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. We are fortunate to have a number of distinguished guests here this morning. Please join me in recognizing their attendance among other members of the Senior Executive Service and Flag and General Officers. The Honorable Maisie Hirono, United States Senator, State of Hawaii. The Honorable Brian Schatz, United States Senator, State of Hawaii. The Honorable Ed Case, United States Representative, First District of Hawaii. The Honorable, Honorable Jill Takuda, United States Representative, Second District of Hawaii. Admiral Sam Paparo, United States Navy, Commander, U.S. Pacific Fleet. And Vice Admiral Jeff Chabon, Deputy Chief of Naval Operations for Installations and Logistics. We also thank the Pacific Fleet Ceremonial Band and Kahu Kaeva for their participation in today's ceremony. Our appreciation extends to all joining us here today, as well as those viewing live online. At this time, please welcome for opening remarks, Mr. Jerry Mikan, President of Hawaiian Dredging Construction Company, representing our contract partner, a joint venture of Dragados, Hawaiian Dredging, and Orion. Aloha. Aloha. And good morning. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the P209 Dry Dock 3 replacement anchoring ceremony here at Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard and Intermediate Maintenance Facility. Our DHO Joint Venture Partnership is extremely excited to be selected by the Navy to build this new dry dock at this location where we are today. Our partnership is comprised of three companies Dragados, Hawaiian Dredging, and Orion. Dragadas has been building ports, dams, highway, bridges, tunnels, and high-speed rail projects for the past 80 years around the world. Hawaiian Dredging has built numerous projects throughout Hawaii and the Pacific for the past 120 years, and Hawaiian Dredging self-performed the largest general contractor today. Hawaiian Dredging built the first dry dock in Pearl Harbor, which started construction in 1909, so it's great to be back. Orion, headquartered in Houston, Texas, has over 100 years of heavy civil, marine, and industrial construction experience to date. The anchoring ceremony event logo you see here in front of us represents the rich history of Hawaii where ancient Hawaiians believe Pearl Harbor was once the home of the guardian sharks Kahuha Paha and her brother Kahi Uka. Pearl Harbor, which is also known to Hawaiians as Kaawailao o Pua Puloa, was the site of the largest and fierce battle between the guardian sharks of Oahu and Monterey sharks from the island of Hawaii. The two sharks on this logo represent Kahuha Paha and Kahi Uka, where they are the protectors of Pearl Harbor and the new Dry Dock 5, which we have just started to build. Thank you for taking the time to join us today and enjoy the program. Thank you, Mr. Mikan. Next, we are honored to receive remarks from the senior Navy leader present today, Admiral Sam Paparo. Admiral Paparo has previously commanded U.S. Naval Forces Central Command, U.S. Fifth Fleet and Combined Maritime Forces Bahrain, Carrier Strike Group 10, Carrier Air Wing 7, and Strike Fighter Squadrons VFA-106 and VFA-195. He is the current commander of the U.S. Pacific Fleet, the world's largest fleet command, advancing Indo-Pacific regional maritime security and stability. Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Paparo.
Steve, my thanks for a warm introduction. Aloha, dear friends. Aloha. It's such a great honor to participate in this ceremony and for uh, Senator Hirono for all of the Hawaii delegation. Thanks for honoring us with your presence today. Uh, today we're honoring uh, to the anchoring of the first piling uh, for Dry Dock 5. And this is the first new dry dock in Pearl Harbor since the Second World War. This dock builds on Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard's legacy of more than 100 years of service. And most importantly, looking to the future, will ready us for the next 100. As we are here in the heart of the Pacific and in the Pacific century, this shipyard and its people are absolutely indispensable to our nation's defense and has been so since its founding in 1908. By expertly maintaining and repairing submarines and ships, the Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard has built a remarkable legacy of keeping the fleet fit to fight. The first dry dock, as discussed, was opened here in 1919. The other three came uh, throughout the 1940s to increase the shipyard repair capacity and capability during the Second World War. It was, in fact, indispensable to victory here in the Pacific. And today, while we celebrate uh, the driving of the piling and while we commemorate the work that's done on the facility, lest we forget the real system here at the Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard, and it is the heroic shipyard workers and the engineers and all of the team that look after our nation's security in the maritime profession. And it is a dangerous profession. While we talk about the, uh, about the Second World War and, uh, and uh, the strife and ultimate victory in the Second World War, and as we're here in the shadow, as you can see over my right shoulder of the USS Arizona, Less known is the fact that most of the battle force that came under attack on 7 December was actually repaired and returned to combat service by the heroic shipyard workers here. And uh, maybe the greatest victory that the United States Navy ever celebrates, the Battle of Midway, was in fact won right here. In May of 1942, the aircraft carrier USS Yorktown took extensive damage in the Battle of the Coral Sea. The task force commander and the shipyard manager estimated that it would be three months to return USS Yorktown back uh, to service. But Admiral Nimitz and the nation didn't have three months. He needed it back fast. He needed it ready to defend Midway and Hawaii against an expected Japanese attack and told the workforce we must have this ship back in three days, not three months. 1,400 shipyard workers, welders, shipwrights, electricians, answered Admiral Nimitz's call. They applied ingenuity, creativity, determination, and teamwork to get the job done. Laboring around the clock, they returned Yorktown to sea in less than 72 hours. And in fact, Yorktown was decisive in Midway, the decisive battle of the Second World War in the, in the Pacific. And this shipyard will be decisive in the 21st century. We pray not in achieving victory in combat, but in deterring conflict so that the Pacific lives up to its name, the Ocean of Peace. Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard and its people have not rested on their laurels since then. I was, I was uh, chatting with uh, Senator Schatz and Rep. Case uh, just uh, previous to and told them that I have some guilty knowledge of shipyard performance across the United States Navy. And in fact, and Richard, kudos to you, the Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard is the top performing shipyard in the United States of America. And these are, not, these are not just idle qualitative statements, but it's on time performance, on budget performance, on uh, the workmanship and the quality and the rates of rework on the jobs that are done here. 
this is the jewel in the crown of all of the uh, of all of the Navy's shipyards right here in our island home in Pacific and its people serve in the spirit of their World War II forebears their innovation attention to detail grit and uh, they are unmatched and they will continue to keep the fleet fit to fight the country's investment in dry dock 5 will give this talented team the tools they need to maintain and repair submarines and ships for the next 100 years. And we'll keep the peace that we pray for every night. This project is just one part of our nation's commitment to improving our shipyards through the $21 billion Shipyard Infrastructure Optimization Plan. It will improve the condition, capacity, and configuration of our four public shipyards, not just here, but in Washington State, Virginia, and New Hampshire. The Navy and the nation are investing in the future and bringing these centuries-old facilities into the modern era. But lest we forget which is the most important, it's the one here in the hub of the Pacific in the Pacific century. In Draw Dock 5, private industry, with many thanks to private industry, teaming with the Navy, and most importantly, the Hawaii community will realize this investment. I thank you all for your resourcefulness, for your persistence, but most of all, between industry, between community, and between, uh, between the United States Navy and the government, uh, what is most required is our teamwork. And uh, Kahu, uh, your beautiful prayer, uh, summoning the Almighty in helping us with this teamwork was most appreciated. Like those who repaired Yorktown, we're all working together and tirelessly to make this crucial combat capability ready to keep the peace by being ready for what may, what may come. My thanks to all very much. Mahalo. Thank you, Admiral Paparo. Our keynote speaker today was elected to the United States Senate in 2012, becoming Hawaii's first elected female senator and the country's first Asian American woman senator. She serves on the Armed Services Committee and is the chair of the Armed Services Subcommittee on Readiness and Management Support, where she is leading the charge to modernize military infrastructure in Hawaii and across the country. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming to the podium Senator Maisie Hirono. Aloha. This is a momentous occasion indeed. I'm really glad, of course, to be here with all of you. And I would note that uh, while Admiral Paparo leads the Pacific Fleet, we are looking forward to his confirmation as commander of Indo-PACOM. He will be in charge of the whole thing. <laughs> so, um, I'm really glad uh, Admiral Paparo and your team, our contractors, Hawaiian Dredging and Orion, and of course, uh, my partners in the Hawaii delegation, Senator Schatz, Congressman Case, Congresswoman uh, Takuda. We are all here because this is a very momentous occasion. Of course, the construction of a dry dock is a massive project for any shipyard. And this dry dock is a critical part of our ability to repair and maintain our naval forces. For years, the workforce at Pearl Harbor has been challenged to conduct timely, efficient repairs and maintenance on ships and submarines, despite, I have to say, uh, not as efficient a shipyard layout and uh, dealing with aging infrastructure, not through any fault of our workers, but you know, the, the infrastructure needed to be upgraded. So with the current layout, transit times for repairs and materials and all of that takes longer. And now, uh, none of our dry docks are equipped to work on the new Block 5 Virginia class submarines. And I know that our submarines are the asymmetric advantage that we have over our pacing threats from China and Russia. 
the number of Navy, naval assets requiring maintenance and uh, in the Pacific is projected to increase and we must be able to accommodate that increase. Pearl Harbor Shipyard plays a critical role in serving the fleet in the Indo-Pacific region, which is why the modernization of this shipyard and the construction of Dry Dock 5 are so critical. Now, Admiral Papara talked about how important our dry docks were in repairing our ships during World War II, and my husband, who is with me, Lake Noshima, sitting right there next to Senator Schatz, is a World War II buff, and he reminded me uh, of the ships that were destroyed during World War II, attack on Pearl Harbor. Our dry docks were not destroyed, and within a very short period of time, six of our battleships were repaired and set back out to sea. And that is why dry docks are so important to our military readiness. And sitting as I do on the Armed Services Committee and having chaired the Sea Power Subcommittee and now chairing the Readiness Subcommittee, I have made maintenance and modernization of our military infrastructure and shipyards a top priority. And this project signifies the state of the, the start, excuse me, of the fourth period of infrastructure improvements at the Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard and facilities. Dry Dock 5 will provide much needed capability for efficient maintenance, upgrades, and repairs so that our combat capable submarines can remain combat ready. This dry dock is a part of our shipyard improvement optimization program, SIOP which is a multi-decade commitment to modernizing our four public shipyards. It is truly the first time that we all recognize how important it is to have shipyards that are modern, efficient, so our shipyard workers can do the jobs that we ask of them. The SIOP recognizes that modern, as they say, reliable infrastructure is vital to our military readiness and operational capabilities. And Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard is a key piece of our military infrastructure in the Pacific, and we all know they are the largest employer, industrial employer in Hawaii. There will be over 2,000 workers working on this dry dock. While Dry Dock 5 is an important component of SIOP here at Pearl Harbor, it is only one component, a very major component, of the work needed to fully modernize this shipyard. And I have been vocal, as many of you know, about the timely construction of the waterfront production facility and other important components that are part of the development plan. I also want to point out that these projects can result in huge cost overruns as we experienced at Portsmouth Naval Shipyard in New Hampshire, where a dry dock project resulted in a cost overrun from the initial estimate of $528 million to $2.2 billion. The Navy was able to apply the lessons learned from Portsmouth to Pearl Harbor by increasing contractor competition, improving coordination, and streamlining construction. I know all of you who are responsible for this dry dock will keep an eagle eye on this project to make sure that it is completed on time and on budget. I'm looking at you all. <laughs> I know you get it done. The improvements made at this shipyard will have a lasting impact on our workforce and our community for decades to come. Admiral Popar said a hundred years. I appreciate all the work that you all have put into this project and for this day to come and we're really proud to be here to join all of you and of course I look forward to joining all of you when we celebrate the opening of Dry Dot 5. Mahalo nui loa. Thank you Senator Hirono. Senator if you could please remain here on stage I'll ask Admiral Paparo to join you for the main event of the morning. Today's anchoring ceremony is in lieu of a traditional groundbreaking ceremony, which was canceled last August out of respect for Maui in the aftermath of the devastating wildfires. Though construction is now well underway, we are marking an early significant milestone, the permanent installation of the inaugural pile grouping. In a moment, with a push of a button, 
Senator Hirono and Admiral Paparo will begin the sequence of operations for the construction crew to drive the pile. Senator, Admiral, would you please do the honors? The steel pipe pile segment being driven is 85 inches, just over 7 feet, in diameter, with a wall thickness of 1.4 inches and a length of 75 feet. It is being driven by a vibratory hammer with a force of 554 tons. To reach the design tip elevation of 190 feet below mean sea level over approximately the next two days, the segment stage adjacent to the seating area will be welded to the one being driven and then brought to final bearing capacity with a hydraulic impact hammer. 146 85 inch piles like these are being sent from the mainland to be received and staged at YPO Peninsula and then driven through a steel template like the one you see here at the waterline along with the same number of steel sheet pile pairs to form a shoring wall that will frame a, the permanent concrete dry dock floor and walls. A section of this shoring wall is on display behind the seating area. This technical approach reduces the total number of required piles and impact duration by 9 to 12 months and meets the mission need date of January 2028. Ladies and gentlemen, the anchor pile for Dry Dock 5. Thank you again, Senator Hirono and Admiral Paparo. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our formal ceremony and marks the beginning of the next phase of this vital project. Will the audience please stand as our honored guests depart and, pre and proceed to the reception tent located just outside the fence. And if you have not done so already, we invite all guests to sign the pile segment staged behind you as you exit. Please take this opportunity to record your participation in this historic project with one of the markers on the table located near the pile. Mahalo and God bless to all. <laughs>